hello everyone and welcome to this video my name is akhil and i'm going to speak about oxygen sensor present in our vehicles so we will be looking at the types of the sensors their working the location of the sensors in our vehicle and in case of any faults uh, we will see how to test and debug the sensor and finally what are the results so as we all know that nowadays all the vehicles are having so many sensors in built in it for various reasons among them oxygen sensor is one of the key sensors considered by federal emission and it is made mandatory in all cars and light truck vehicles to assemble the oxygen sensor in a vehicle to monitor the pollution and the exhaust gases which are thrown out of the engine so usually oxygen sensors are placed in the exhaust pipe as we can see here there is a oxygen sensor and a part of it is kept inside the exhaust pipe to monitor what is the concentration of oxygen which is thrown out of the vehicle and the sensed voltage is then sent to the ecu to recognize what is the mixture whether it is lean oxygen mixture or it is a rich oxygen mixture so there are basically three types of oxygen sensor first one is zincronium dioxide based oxygen sensor second is titanium dioxide based sensor and third is air flow based oxygen sensor so in case of zincronium dioxide based sensor the voltage is distributed due to the oxy oxygen ions which are across the surface of two platinum electrodes similarly in case of titanium dioxide based sensor the potential difference which is measured across the electrodes is due to the resistance which is being changed due to the presence of amount of oxygen ions in the exhaust and in air fuel based oxygen sensor it is similar to the zinc zincronium based sensor but additionally it provides the feedback control uh, loop to the ecu to increase its efficiency so this is a zincronium dioxide based sensor so this these are the two elect platinum electrodes and inside which the atmospheric uh, oxygen is is been heated to increase the amount of oxygen ions inside this and from here when the exhaust stream enters it also contains some amount of oxygen ions present inside it and when these oxygen ions are hit on this electrodes the ionization takes place and during that process there is a voltage which is being generated depending upon the amount of oxygen ions present and this voltage is then sensed by a sensor circuitry and then the voltage is sent to the ecu for monitoring purpose so when the air fuel ratio is lean the oxygen contained in the exhaust gas is high and thus it produces a voltage which is less than 300 millivolts which could be sensed by the ecu and the decision can be made conversely there is a less residual oxygen in the exhaust gas when the mixture is rich under this condition the oxygen sensor will output the voltage more than 600 millivolts and ideally the voltage can reach up to 1 volts so this is a typical graph of sensor output voltage versus 
excess air factor so here we can see when there is a lean mixture the sensor output is very low but the excess air factor is more and similarly when the output voltage is high it is considered to be the lean mix rich mixture and the excess air factor is less but when when the mixture is uh, at its steady state which is a stoichiometric ratio of air fuel mixture the excess air factor is approximately 1 and we can observe there is a drastic change in the sensor voltage output which is ap approximately a from 800 millivolts to around 160 170 millivolts so this can be sensed again by the ECU and we can conclude that the stoichiometric ratio has been achieved so uh, similarly this is a titanium dioxide based sensor as uh, mentioned before that it is a resistive method so here a constant voltage is been sent to one of the electrode and depending upon the concentration of uh, oxygen ions between these two electrodes the the output voltage from this other side of an electrode is sensed by an ECU and when the resistivity changes the output voltage accordingly changes and this change is then sensed by the sensor circuit and then sent to the uh, controller to make a decision so this is a typical graph of combustion parameter versus the resistance so here we can observe that when the resistance is very less the combustion parameter is also less but as the resistance increases which means that number of oxygen ions between the electrodes increases the combustion parameter is also increased so uh, nowadays the vehicles are being manufactured with two oxygen sensors earlier there used to be only one oxygen sensor but nowadays for more efficiency there are two oxygen sensors which are mounted in the vehicle system one is uh, before the catalytic converter and one is after the catalytic converter the one which is before the catalytic converter is also called as upstream sensor which basically measures the amount of oxygen ions present when the engine when the engine does the combustion process and the residual gases are thrown out and then the amount of oxygen ions sensed is then sent to the control unit and the sensor which is uh, mounted after the catalytic converter is basically used to observe the functionality or the efficiency of a catalytic converter that how more efficiently the catalytic converter is working so usually oxygen sensors or any other sensors present in vehicle system are made very rugged as the environment in which they are being used is very extreme but due to some reason uh, the wear and tear of a sensor happens and the sensor stops working hence we require some tools or some methodologies to test the working of a sensor so here are a few methods which we'll see one is the key on engine of oxygen sensor test so to perform this test 
we have to make sure that vehicle has not run for several hours first of all and once that is achieved then we can start with step number 1 so in step number 1 it says that connect a scan tool or get the display ready to show oxygen sensor data so in case of absence of scan tool we can also make use of a uh, digital multimeter so which can sense the output voltage from the oxygen sensor then in step 2 key the engine on without starting the engine the heater in the oxygen sensor will start heating the sensor and in step 3 we have to observe the voltage of oxygen sensor the applied bias voltage of 450 millivolts should slowly decrease for all oxygen sensors as they become more electrically conductive as the bias voltage is flowing to ground so when the output is output is read by the digital multimeter then in step 4 we can say that if the output voltage is around 100 millivolts or even less than that uh, after 3 minutes of continuous testing like this we can say the sensor is a is in good condition but if we are reading very high voltages even after 3 minutes or it is taking more than 3 minutes to come down to 100 millivolts or less than that then we can say that the oxygen sensor is damaged or not good for use so the second method is the propane oxygen test so in this step connect again the digital oscilloscope or digital multimeter to the oxygen sensor sig- signal wire then start and operate the engine until it reaches operating temperature and is in closed loop fuel control while watching the scope display add some propane to the air inlet the scope display should read full reach that is more than 800 millivolts then shut off the propane the waveform should drop to less than 200 millivolts immediately and in step 5 quickly add some propane while the oxygen sensor is reading low and watch how rapidly transition happens and if the transition happens within less than 100 milliseconds then we can again conclude that the oxygen sensor is in a good condition or else we can conclude that it is very defective so these are few uh, experimental results given by the industry to verify whether the oxygen sensor is good or it can be improvised or it is completely defective and needs a replacement so if you observe the table carefully we observe that in case of getting any reading any abrupt reading in any of the case which is minimum voltage or maximum voltage if we are getting any vague reading then we can conclude that the sensor is definitely de- defective and in other cases where the combination of minimum and the maximum voltage is shown in the table we can conclude if the sensor is okay or system is operating in lean condition or the system is operating in rich mixture state etc so uh, any o2 sensor that is defective obviously needs to be replaced but there are also many other benefits of re- replacing the oxygen sensor periodically for preventive maintenance 
so replacing an aging oxygen sensor that has become sluggish can restore peak fuel efficiency minimize the exhaust emissions and prolong the life of the converter so this is it thank you everyone for listening to this video